Welcome to session 18 of Financial Statement Analysis Series. My name is Shailesh and in today's session, we are going to talk about calculating manufacturing and trading profit margins. In our previous session, session 17, we talked about how to compute COGS for an Indian listed company and how to segregate it into manufacturing COGS and trading COGS. So for viewers who haven't taken a look at session 17 of Financial Statement Analysis Series, request you to please watch that video first and then proceed ahead with this one. All right, assuming that you have done that already, in today's session, we are going to talk about how to compute manufacturing and trading profit margins. And as always, we will be taking a case study at point, which is with these specialty foods. Now with these specialty foods is into manufacturing synthetic and natural food colors. They manufacture as well as trade these food colors and which is where we are going to talk about their manufacturing profit margins and trading profit margins. We've already studied in our previous sessions of revenues, how to compute or rather how to, this, uh, how to take a look at manufacturing revenue and trading revenue in the footnote of revenue figures. So what I have here on the screen is annual report 2020 of Vidhi specialty and we are looking at consolidated PNL statements. There is no comparable 2019 figures for consolidated, it looks like the company created a new subsidiary in 2019 and perhaps before that there was only standalone and there was no need of consolidated given one single entity. Starting 2020, they started presenting both standalone and consolidated. Now, when we take a look at this, revenue from operations for FY 2020, the figure which we see here is 22461 lakhs. So I'm just gonna write it down for everyone's reference here on the white screen. So the overall revenue is 22461.58. Now I know you must be thinking, how can I take this revenue? Because in our previous sessions, we have discussed that never take revenue as per projected. Do take a look at what comprises in that particular figure. So yes, for everyone's benefit, what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at footnote number 15 to see whether what they have termed here as revenue from operations is net of excise duty, which is GST. Honestly speaking, that happens to be true because, you know, after GST, all the revenue figures have been reported ex GST and there is no excise duty figure, which you see here. So the figures which you are taking a look at are net of excise duty. And just to make sure that all the line items which are reported as revenue from operations and are genuinely operating in nature, let's take a look at footnote 15 of revenue from operations. I think it is on page number 205. So I'm just going to quickly move to page number 205. Okay, uh, yeah, here you go. So revenue from operations, as you can see, the 22461 figure, 22461, and all the figures manufacturing and traded, other operating revenue, exporter incentive, and these trans currency transaction and translation. For now, we will take it for granted under the operating aspect. We will study more about these currency transaction and translation when we talk about hedging and uh, as well as foreign currency assets. All right, when we take a look at this, we can clearly see that the overall revenue for this business uh, after including manufacturing and trading and the other operating revenue, obviously there is no segregation when it comes to manufacturing and trading. So if we want to calculate overall profit margin of this business, we will be taking a look at this as a overall revenue and overall COGS we will compute. And at the same time, if someone is looking to calculate manufacturing profit margins, we should take manufacturing revenue. The manufacturing revenue, I'm just gonna write on the left-hand side of the screen and for everyone's benefit, you know, howsoever terrible my handwriting may be, let me just uh, pen it down. So manufacturing, uh, revenue is 1822.9.84. Now these many lakhs and trading is again the remaining one. So, you know, uh, you get the point. So I'm just gonna write it trading revenue to be 3115.37. Now what we need to do and what we need to calculate uh, the profit margin of the business, overall profit margin of the business, gross profit margin, and uh, manufacturing profit margin and trading profit margins, we need to take a look at COGS. Now, we have discussed in our previous 
session, session 17, that you will never find one single line item uh, called COGs on the income statement. And this is something which is pretty evident when we take a look at the income statement here. You are nowhere to see COGs line item, which is where in our previous session, we studied that there will be three line items, cost of raw material consumed, purchases, and changes in stock entry. So you need to take a total of these three as overall COG. So if you add these three together, um, I, I, uh, I think you will get a number present on the blog here. One second, let me just quickly refer to the calculations. You'll get a figure somewhere around 13345. So I'm just gonna come here. You'll get a figure after adding all these three together, 13345. Now, this is overall revenue. This is overall COGS. Now, if you subtract them together, you should get overall gross profit of that business. And to calculate gross profit margin, you will have to do gross profit divided by overall revenue, which is this figure, right? So I think this is pretty clear how to compute overall gross profit margin of any particular business. Now that you know how to calculate COGS of any particular business. Um, but if we were to calculate manufacturing uh, COGS, and this is something which we covered in our previous session once again. So for manufacturing COGS, what do you need? Remember, you need two line items. One is cost of raw materials consumed, which is readily available, thankfully, on the income statement. Uh, so we have this to be part of your manufacturing COGS. And we need changes in manufacturing, uh, you know, for manufacturing COGS, we need changes in work in progress and finished goods. Uh, but we don't need traded goods there because that's the trading COGS. So given it's already clubbed here in the third footnote or the third line item, what we need to do is we need to take a look at only the finished goods changes, which is opening minus closing. So which is where we need to open footnote 17C and that number will be part of this 11.44. We need to carve it out of that. So, you know, for revenue, manufacturing revenue, the COGS will be a uh, sum of cost of raw materials consumed, which is 10630. You know, once again, for everyone's benefit, we are taking this number to be here, right? And uh, what we will be needing is changes in finished goods and work in progress, if any. So we need to take a look at the footnote now. So uh, to take a look at the footnote, obviously we will be uh, delving deeper into footnote number 17, which happens to be on page number 207. I'm just going to go to page number 207. So what we see here is the opening finished goods, opening finished goods minus closing finished goods. So this is changes in finished goods and opening working progress minus closing working progress. So this is change in working progress. So what we need to do is, we need to add these two numbers together. So that's going to be the, sorry for that. So that's going to be the uh, change in uh, overall uh, work in progress and finished code. So the number which you see here, 10630, what we will be doing is we will be adding 145.38, which is changes in work in progress. And we will also be adding minus 315.77. That happens to be change in what? Finished goods, right? So adding them all together, if we add these three figures together, we should get overall manufacturing COGS of this business. Remember what we see here to be 181, that's trading COGS ka part hai. We will have to add purchases to it to get trading COGS. So I'm just gonna write it down. So changes in SIT is 181.83. Now, you know, for everyone's benefit, let me calculate it here. Uh, so I'm just gonna open it in browser 10630. So 10630 plus, hang on, let me just uh, clear up this mess. And, uh, so, sorry, yeah. So what we need to do is we need to add 10630 
145.38 and 315.77 will be subtracted because it's a negative amount. So it's actually getting added. So 10630 plus, um, what was the amount? 145.38, 145.38 minus third amount, 315.77. So 315.77. So you get 10459.61. So overall manufacturing COGSS is 10. Uh, hang on. Terrible memory. 10459.6. So 10459.6. Now this is manufacturing COGS. Manufacturing revenue is 18229. So if you were to calculate manufacturing gross profit, it will be this 18229 minus. 10459.6 that will be manufacturing profit hopefully it is clear to all of you by now how to calculate manufacturing uh, profits so to calculate manufacturing revenue let me just quickly uh, walk you through with what we have done so far so when we take a look at overall gross profit of a business we always take a look at the overall revenue operating revenue which is taken here for 2246, 1.58. And overall, um, COGS, as you can see from the income statement, we have taken those together. When we added them together, we get 13345, as you can see the formula in Excel. And then eventually to calculate the gross profit margin, which is revenue minus COGS divided by overall revenue, which you see here, the overall profit margin, gross profit margin of this business is 41% in FY20. Right now, if we want, if we want to actually calculate the manufacturing profit margins, as we did earlier, what we will be doing is we'll be taking manufacturing revenue 18229. If you remember precisely what we have done, and where did we get this 18229? We got it from the footnote of uh, you know revenue, and uh, unfortunately, it's including excise duty, and they haven't really given breakout break breakup of uh, excise duty, which means GST for manufacturing trading so we will ignore that aspect and we'll be taking it directly as granted so manufacturing uh, revenue is we have taken and manufacturing cogs if you remember we'll be taking cost of raw materials consumed and changes in working progress and finished goods so cost of raw materials consumed was straightforward directly from the income statement 10630 and if you wanted to take a look at changes in work in progress and finished goods we opened the footnote and uh, changes in finished goods and uh, work in progress, which we see here on the screen, we have taken it here. What we have done is opening minus closing, opening minus closing. Instead, we could have directly taken these figures. That could also work, what we did. So if you remember, we in fact got this exact number, 10459.6, somewhere around that. And if we were to take a look at manufacturing revenue, manufacturing COGS, so overall manufacturing profit margin will be revenue minus COGS divided by revenue. So we get 43% profit margin of manufacturing goods. And naturally, you know, we discussed this in our previous video as well. Um, firms often tend to manufacture those particular goods where they have huge gross profit margins and they tend to trade those goods where they don't really have that much profit margins. Um, and generally the traded goods tend to be commodity in nature, which can be manufactured by anyone else. Having said that, that need not always be true. One needs to take a look at the profit margins to judge the nature of the goods which are being uh, traded and which are being manufactured by the business. All right, now to move forward, uh, what we will be doing now is calculate trading profit margins of this business. Now, when it comes to Vidhi, trading profit margins, ke liye, we need to take a look at trading revenues first. And I think uh, all of us do, did take a look at trading revenues, which is 3115.37. So we'll take that as uh, revenue, you know, in our screenshot just below this, you can see 3115.37. Now that's a revenue directly from the footnote of trading revenues and uh, trading revenue from the footnote of overall uh, revenue from operations. And then for trading COGS, what we need is two line items. If you remember purchases and changes in stock in trade. So purchases once again can be directly taken from um, you know the income statement, which is purchases of traded goods. It has been given directly to be 2703.56. So what do you see here on this calculation board here is 2703.56. That is purchases and changes in stock and trade can be taken from the footnote uh, 17C. So I'm just going to open it on page number 207. So changes in traded goods, 652 minus 470. 
and that is precisely what we have done here 652 minus 470 so you could have directly taken the number 181.83 for granted they're just trying to explain things to you guys so that it's easier for you to take a look at so 183 uh you know when we subtract those we get 183 and we add 182 and we get uh, and subtracting from uh, uh, you know the traded revenue you get a gross profit and gross profit margin as you can see for traded goods is just seven percent you know that basically uh, confirms our preliminary understanding of what kind of goods a business might be trading but like i said never ever have any presumptions that trading goods will for sure have lower profit margins as compared to manufacturing uh, goods you know you never know what kind of uh, underlying factors may be at play there so do take a look at the nature of the business the nature of outsourcing activities see often um, trading goods are known as outsourcing uh, you know trading is often known as outsourcing activity right so why are we even bothering about taking a look at manufacturing and trading because if you want to take a look at what's actually driving the profit margin of a business, you need to first take a look at whether it's manufacturing activity, which is driving the you know, profit margin of a business or whether it is trading activity and how much percentage of uh, revenues are being generated through manufacturing and how much percentage are being generated through trading. Combining these two factors, you can actually paint a really good picture about that business. So precisely what we have tried to do here in the screenshot, as you can see, a similar time series analysis. So, so if, if you guys remember, 41% is what we got, 43% is for manufacturing and 7% was for trading. So the same thing we, we have, you know, tried to pictorically put it down here in this neat table. As you can see, the overall profit margins of the business has been increasing since 2014. I mean, look at this. Since 2014, the profit margin of the businesses have grown from 25 to 41%. And why wouldn't it be? I mean, look at the percentage of manufactured goods. They have increased drastically. And look at the margins of manufacturing goods. It's nearly in the vicinity of 40%. So if you are manufacturing more of the goods, which are giving you more margin, what happens to the overall margin of the business? It increases, right? So you're seeing a combined or a compounded impact here where a business is manufacturing more of goods where they are having, they are having more profit margins. So... Ma manufacturing goods, which generally typically earn 40% of profit margins for the business across the years, they are trying to manufacture more of those manufacturing goods or since 2014. So, which is why for with these specialty foods, you can see that the gross profit margins of the business have improved drastically in last seven, eight years. Again, once again, this is just case study at point from an educational perspective. We are not trying to recommend this and in any manner. So please understand all of our posts, all of our recordings, all of our uh, videos are purely from an educational perspective. There are far too many factors to take a look at before you make any stock, stock recommendations. But what we are trying to give out from this video is for you to be able to pinpoint why the profit margins of the business are improving and how to take a look at that analysis. So, you know, we have already done this part of our analysis in our revenue line item figures where we understood how the composition of manufacturing and trading revenues are going on across a time frame. Moreover, taking a look at the deviating or fluctuating profit margins of individual manufacturing and trading and combining them with a the bigger picture of composition of revenue from manufacturing trading gives you a really good color around the improving or degrading, whichever case may be, uh, for the overall profit margins of the business. So hopefully you guys like this video. For more such con content, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel where you will find more such content around financial statement analysis series, valuation series. In fact, we also have started a stalwart series where we invite freely reputed fund managers out there to talk about their investment ideologies without any, you know, general gyan. We directly, you know, focus on applicability oriented knowledge is where some really good quality questions have been asked by our students and alumni. So do take a look at those videos. In case if you have any questions about this video, Please do pop. Please do uh, fill in the comment section on our YouTube section. Also, you can take a look at the return blog of this on our website forum, Financial Statement Analysis Series, and you should be able to find the return format here. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Shailesh, and I hope to see you guys in the next session.